Let's talk about a few counseling techniques that make the experience better for the scouts. For the scout to get the most benefit from the counseling session, he must feel welcome and relaxed. A friendly greeting and a few simple questions such as, what got you interested in the astronomy merit badge, will go a long way. Another way to put a scout at ease is to show him something related to the merit badge subject. For example, you might show him your coin collection, but it's best not to overwhelm him. Remember, part of your role is to help scouts be responsible for their own full participation in the process. One way to accomplish this is to carefully review all the requirements together. Be sure to emphasize those key action words like demonstrate, make a list, or collect, identify, and label. Working together, interacting, and developing an understanding from the very beginning that there are no shortcuts to earning the badge may help scouts take the advent initiative and be fully engaged. Lastly, keep in mind that the merit badge experience should be gratifying to both you and the scouts. Remember, this is scouting. It's supposed to be fun. Using the EDGE method in providing learning experiences has the potential to increase retention. Explaining is important because it clarifies the subject for the learner and for the instructor. Demonstrating is important because it allows learners to see as well as hear how something is done. They can follow the process from beginning to end. Guiding is important because it allows learning by doing. It allows the instructor to see how well learners are grasping the skill. Enabling is important because it allows learners to use the skills themselves. It also encourages repetition, which is an important part of mastering a skill. It is acceptable and sometimes desirable for merit badges to be taught to groups of scouts. Popular forums include summer camp, of course, and also merit badge midways, fairs, and clinics, and the use of technology through webinars and videocasts. The greatest benefits to group instruction probably stem from the ability to bring in subject matter experts from neighboring colleges and universities and to have scouts work together to discuss concepts and learn skills. Getting several scouts together for merit badges also tends to encourage the use of slideshows and other approaches that might not seem feasible with just a counselor, a scout, and his buddy. The biggest challenge to group instruction is monitoring each individual scout's progress. The larger the group, the more difficult it is to maintain a degree of personal attention to every participant. If the group becomes too large, then more counselors must be brought to bear or other methods must be used to assure that every scout actually and personally fulfills every requirement. If this challenge cannot be met, then group instruction must be abandoned. Awarding badges to scouts on the basis of sitting in classrooms watching demonstrations or remaining silent during discussions is totally and completely unacceptable. In order to offer quality merit badge programs in a group setting, council and district advancement committees should put reasonable checks and balances in place. First, assure that only merit badge counselors who are known to be registered and approved are allowed to participate and that they agree to sign off only those requirements each scout has actually and personally completed. And be sure that any guest experts or guest speakers or others assisting who are not registered and approved counselors are just that and do not behave like counselors signing blue cards, for example. Second, counselors should agree on a way to verify that prerequisites for certain merit badges have been completed prior to scouts attending the session. It must not be assumed that prerequisites have been completed without evidence of some sort 
that the work has been done. Third, concerns about summer camp or other group instructional merit badge programs should be reported to your council advancement committee. The form, quote, reporting merit badge counseling concerns, unquote, in the guide to advancement appendix may be used for this purpose. Most scouts will attend summer camp at some point and have the opportunity to earn outdoor-related badges like swimming, rifle shooting, canoeing, and many of the handicraft-related badges. Badge instruction is almost always conducted in group sessions, often led by staff members under 18. Councils must ensure, however, that a registered, qualified, and approved counselor is present to oversee these sessions and to sign the blue card certifying that each scout has actually and personally fulfilled all the requirements as they are written. There are no camp-related exemptions from the qualifications described under Qualifications of Counselors, Topic 7011, in the Guide to Advancement. Councils may not change the rules about who qualifies. This includes eligibility age, as well as registration and approval as counselors. Merit badge fairs, colleges, or midways provide an opportunity for councils, districts, or even units to offer scouts an overview or introduction to multiple merit badges. Unless participants have completed many or most of the requirements ahead of time, it should be rare that merit badges can be completed during these one- or two-day events. Few, if any, merit badges lend themselves to such a fast pace. If the event is operated according to BSA policies and procedures, most scouts will get a good start on the requirements, with the ability to finish them later with another registered and approved counselor. Expectations should be established and made known well before the date of the event as to which requirements must be fulfilled ahead of time in order to actually finish merit badges at the event. Then, at the event, there must be attention to each individual's projects and confirmation that requirements are actually and personally completed. As we discussed earlier, every scout must participate fully. It's unacceptable to give credit for simply attending. Although it is permissible to charge fees for merit badge fairs or clinics or similar events, any such charges should be limited to recovering the costs directly related to presenting the opportunity. Local councils and districts may also include in the fee a reasonable contribution to the council's overhead and administrative costs. Using merit badge events as fundraisers is not prohibited. However, the National Advancement Team discourages the practice, and councils may exercise their authority not to approve them. It's better to keep any fees at the absolute minimum so all scouts have the opportunity to participate. There may be opportunities for scouts to earn merit badges through participation in activities presented by organizations or businesses not affiliated with the BSA. Zoos, museums, recreation centers, major home improvement stores, and even individuals may be involved. Without prior BSA approval, these opportunities are permitted only when fulfilling merit badge requirements is incidental to the opportunity. For example, a youth recreation center could present a basketball camp and mention in promotional material that participants might, as a result of attending, fulfill some of the requirements for the sports merit badge. Of course, registered and approved merit badge counselors would have to sign off any requirements met. However, even when merit badge opportunities are incidental to the programs presented, outside organizations are not allowed to use BSA-protected trade names, images, logos, or artwork without the express written consent of the National Council. 
Outside organizations and businesses must have approval from the local council that they plan to present classes, events, or similar activities that are largely devoted to the purpose of offering merit badges. For example, the recreation center mentioned above would not be allowed to present a sports merit badge camp without permission. The 2013 Guide to Advancement covers this in more detail in Section 7. Worksheets and other materials that may be of assistance in earning merit badges are available from a variety of sources, including the Internet and troop libraries. Use of these aids is permissible as long as they can be correlated with the current requirements. Completed worksheets may suffice where a requirement calls for something in writing, but they do not work as substitutes where scouts must discuss, tell, show, or demonstrate something. The Boy Scouts of America does not currently produce any worksheets or other similar learning aids for merit badges, simply due to the cost and additional effort related to keeping them up to date. The National Advancement Team, however, recognizes the value of such tools and permits their use as long as merit badge counselors and unit leaders understand this is not official material and that use of the tools must not serve to alter merit badge requirements or provide unauthorized shortcuts. Scouts are still expected to complete all the official requirements as written. It's important to note also that the, regardless of the value of these worksheets or other learning aids, scouts must not be required to use them. 